This is The Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is Moza Racing and their new SRP pedal set. This is the new inexpensive or lower line, lower tier pedal set by Moza Racing, and you can call it part of their ecosystem. However, they are standalone pedals, but looking at it, it is part of the lower line that Moza has now introduced into their entire lineup of products for sim racing. Now this is a load cell based pedal set and it does come as a two pedal set. You can see I have it configured here with the clutch and the three pedal set. But the two pedal set on its own goes for $179 and that does include a 75 kilogram load cell. It is also available in the three pedal set configuration like you see here that goes for $219 or you can buy the two pedal set and then buy the clutch later for $40 which basically ends up being the exact same math no matter how you do it but it is the new low cell based inexpensive lower line product from Moza Racing and the pedals are mostly made of metal steel in this case and feature a dual stage load cell brake pedal in a recent video I actually unboxed these pedals and I did you know the the kid on Christmas morning thing the fun thing of opening the box seeing the parts for the first time and putting it together but it didn't give us enough time to really hammer on them really didn't give us a time to even inspect the parts and see what was really going on it was just that initial first look so now that we have them built up and that we've used them let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the parts how they're built and some of the specs of the SRP pedal set by Moza Racing starting off with the heel plate which is the backbone of the entire pedal set each pedal actually bolts to the heel plate with four small bolts the heel plate is a cut and shaped piece of steel that is powder coated in black and has a nice Moza Racing logo in silver right in the middle. The plate measures in at 2.75 millimeters thick and feels fairly sturdy. The heel plate is 14 and 8 inches or 359 millimeters wide and about 6 inches or 152 millimeters front to back overall. However, the front three quarters of an inch or seven millimeters or so is curved down and not actually usable by your heels. The heel plate has a series of holes drilled into it that allow for the mounting of the pedals and a bit of left to right adjustment for each pedal. In the two pedal configuration, you have about three different positions for each pedal. This gives you about two and five eighths inch or 67 millimeters of left to right adjustability for the gas and brake pedal. If using the clutch and assuming the clutch is as far left as possible and the gas as far to the right as much as possible, you would then have that same three positions covering two and five eighths inches or 67 millimeters of total range between the gas and the clutch for the brake pedal. Beyond that series of holes, on the top are also two larger holes. These are the holes to bolt the pedals down to your rig for hard mounted installations. Looking at the pedals from the bottom and still at the heel plate, you can see a side rubber bumper running along the sides. This touches any flat bottom surface and should reduce smacking sounds or vibrations from occurring. Also on the bottom side, but actually on the pedals themselves, are rubber feet two per pedal to help grip on wood or carpeted surfaces. There's also a hole drilled through the middle of these for hard mounting the back side of the pedals to a rig. All three pedals are built in identical fashion and it starts with the lower tray. This is another piece of cut and shaped piece of powder coated steel that isn't as thick as the heel plate and measures in at 1.75 millimeters thick. These box shaped trays are about two inches or 52 millimeters wide and 10 and 7 eighths or 276 millimeters long. The single piece of metal is bent in the shape of a U providing the base and sides of that tray. There are a few cutouts in it for overall design look and it also incorporates the mounting holes on the bottom. Also installed into the sides of this bottom are the pedal stop and the pivot point for each pedal arm. Also contained within that hinge are the return springs as well as the mounting location for the magnetic encoder or sensor. This sensor is mounted directly to one end of the bolt that is the pivot point for each pedal. The pedal arms are also identical for all three pedals. 
Like the base, they are also meant of that steel that is bent in that U or box shape for strength, and the arms also have a couple of cutouts to break up just being plain. Also cut in the arms is the hinge point at the bottom, as well as the indent that actually hits the bump stops. The face side of the pedal arm also has a set of holes to reposition the pedal faces in one of three positions. Another feature that is shared by all three pedals is the first level of resistance, that being that coiled spring that is sandwiched between the pedal tray and the pedal arm. In the case of the gas and clutch, this is the only resistance, but in the case of the brake, there are a couple more stages of pressure to talk about. This spring on the hinge is linear in its resistance and provides a good amount of return pressure, setting all of the pedals back to their resting positions. We've covered everything that is identical about all three pedals, but there are a few differences that separate each pedal that we can talk about and focus on. So when we start with the throttle pedal, of course, one thing that is unique to this is it actually has the controller board built inside of it. So that's where the little RJ45 plugs for the brake and the clutch, as well as the USB connection, as well as you actually have to plug in the throttle and the brake is two plugs into the throttle pedal. That being one for the magnetic sensor and the other for the position sensor. The face of the gas pedal is made of aluminum and is the elongated type. It measures in at about 8 inches or 203 millimeters tall and about 2 and 5 eighths inches or 67 millimeters wide. It is also black with the exception of the silver headed mounting bolts and the shaved off silver edge going around the pedal face. In its stock location, the pedal face sits almost 9 inches or 229 millimeters above the mounting surface or 8.5 inches or 216 millimeters above the heel plate. The brake pedal on the other hand is a little bit more complex. Starting with right here in the middle of the pedal, there is a mount. That mount holds a shaft and that shaft goes directly into or onto the load cell at the bottom here on the base of the pedal. Between that stack is the 75 kilogram load cell, a lightweight spring, and a medium soft black bushing. When the brake pedal is applied, I covered this during the assembly, or we showed this a little bit, but I just wanna kinda of show you the way this whole thing is working. So when the brake pedal is first applied, you'll see with just initial pressure, you can immediately see this yellow spring start to move. The moment any movement is happening, that shaft is already pressing on the load cell. It is the spring and the bushing that are adding additional or secondary resistance to that function on its own. The load cell is gonna have a little bit of springiness or weight to it as well as you apply pressure. So as you see, what happens is your first or first stage of the resistance is all in this yellow spring. And then as it gets closer to compressing all the way, you can see that it starts to load up on this bushing. You can see right here the bushing is a certain shape and a certain thickness. And you'll see as we increase pressure that this will very slightly start to bulge out and start to decrease the distance between these two cups that are squeezing that. And that's your secondary stage. But I'd argue that there is a hint of a third stage in the load cell on its own. So you can see it's a little bit more or quite a bit more complex than the throttle other than the controller board. The pedal face for the brake and clutch is a tapered square shape, a bit thinner on the bottom, but reversible if desired, and measures in at about three and a quarter inch or 83 millimeters tall by three and three quarter inch or 95 millimeters wide at the widest spot. The pedal face comes mounted at its highest location, which is about seven and three quarter inches or 197 millimeters above the heel plate. The clutch pedal is a super simplified version of the gas pedal. Same everything, except for the pedal face that it shares with the brake and the lack of the controller board, which is over on the throttle pedal. It's the exact same otherwise. When it comes to mounting these pedals, it really does come down to every individual situation. You do have a few options when it comes to these pedals. And you know me, when it comes to pedals, for me, they need to be hard mounted. I mean, it was 20 years ago since I was just sticking a set of pedals on the ground and hoping that they'd stay still or building something up behind them. For the most part, I love hard mounting my pedals, but I will test these because of their price point and because of the little rubber feet. I will test them on carpet 
or on a hard surface, but I'm not that optimistic. Now, again, when it comes to mounting, you do have these main two holes here. You do have those plastic spacers that kind of hold uh, the distance between the heel plate and the mounting surface, and it does come with the bolts, but it doesn't come with the nuts. That'll come down to your hardware. So if you're using a profile chassis, or in my case, an RC, this is 10 and 3 quarter inches apart, which is 275 millimeters, which I believe is the same as the front two holes for the Fanatic mounting point as well. Now, by sheer luck, maybe, when I had the gas and pedal on one position in, it actually lined that hole up in the back to achieve the same holes, and I was able to use all of their bolts, but I did have to supply my own nuts. All four bolts got these mounted down pretty nicely. On the inside, there are also threaded holes that will fit the bolts that are supplied. Now, if you do change the spacing other than that, or you add the clutch and change the spacing, it actually created a problem. None of the back holes actually lined up with any of the holes on my R seat, so I would have been forced to actually start drilling, but I was able to actually kind of use some bolts to hook the back ends, but it did create a little bit of a problem, and I will say, if you bolt down the front, it lifts the rear end up in the air. So you do need to bolt down the bottom, otherwise you're creating a whole other flexing point where it flexes off of that front mount where it lifts it up and you get that flex taking it back to the mounting surface. So if you're gonna bolt the front, you're gonna wanna bolt the rear as well, then these will be pretty sturdy pedals. I also did notice that when I pushed the pedals wider, it actually made the connections on the throttle pedal on the outside actually press against the foam rubber. In fact, now you can see it's completely come off. I originally had trimmed it just to give it clearance for the USB cable and the throttle connection, but in the end, I ended up knocking off the other piece as well. It's just double stuck tape on there. So if I were gonna reinstall these, I would just put it back into place and then mount them back down on my rig but this foam was in the way of actually plugging in the cables or connections and then of course there are the rubber feet on the bottom and again at this price point i can see that some people are going to be so bold to try just putting these on the ground and putting their feet upon them and i'm sure that will happen but i'm sure they'll also learn they're going to need to brace them at the very least because it is a pretty heavy duty pedal set so i did mention it comes with all the hardware it comes with the m6 bolts but again it didn't come with the nut so if you're using t-slot hardware for a profile style rig then it probably came with the nuts, but it, this comes with the bolts that should work with those nuts. And in the case like me, where you're doing an R seat, you'll have to supply your own nuts to go on the bottom when you're going through a standard pedal deck on the bottom of the rig. Okay, blah, 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 blah. That's enough tech, that's enough data, that's enough information about these pedals. Now it is time for the fun part that is getting them out on track seeing how the pedals feel under my feet and how they actually perform while driving, starting with the heel plate. And I really was kind of questioning the thickness of the material all the way around, to be honest with you. The heel plate being the thickest part, it is also the backbone where all the pedals are really mounted to that and any stiffness was gonna really start there. And I was gonna be cautious in testing that. I did start my testing with the SRP pedals in the two pedal configuration. I had the two pedals at a distance wider than I even needed and could have moved them closer or further apart. That is awesome right there. This allowed for a go-kart or modern open wheeled style car that no longer has a clutch type separation, which is wonderful for two foot drivers or left foot breakers. I did find the pedal angle a bit more reclined than most pedals and that required them to be a tad closer to me or I was going to have to adjust my pedal tray to more of an angle for comfort. Despite that heel plate being relatively thin, I did find it gave me a good strong footing under my feet. It really was sturdier than I thought it would be. I was also surprised that the fairly small heel plate seemed to do its job as well. At only five and a quarter inches, I thought it would constantly be resetting my feet, but that wasn't the case. Moving on to the pedals themselves, the action of the throttle pedal was very nice. It is very, very smooth, and with that single spring for tension, has a medium amount of pressure that is consistent from start to finish. The elongated pedal was a nice added bonus over some pedal sets, 
and its accordion style pivot allowed good contact for my shoe. At the end of the massive amount of throw was a very nice bump stop feel. It wasn't too hard or abrupt and at the same time it wasn't too spongy or soft. It clearly and gently let you know that you had pressed far enough. I personally love a long throw gas pedal and on any set that I've ever owned I usually have them set to the maximum. I really did appreciate the distance of the pedal and I found it really allowed me to accurately control the application of the gas. The brake pedal was also very smooth in its overall travel. In its initial pressing it actually feels quite soft and then quickly builds up pressure to acquire a fair amount of effort to get full brake pressure. The brake is dual stage and it really really feels like a dual stage brake. A very easy first half of travel and a semi difficult second half and the split between stages is almost exactly at the 50% point. Knowing the thin gauge of the steel of the main parts of the pedal I was actually a little concerned. This brake requires enough pressure that I figured that I would see lots of flex in the pedal arm and tray itself. The parts resisted this well and the only really noticeable flex point was the actual load cell itself. You could see its plate slightly flexing under heavy pressure. After getting used to the pedal and its dual stage pressure points, I did find it to offer some pretty good trail braking. That light pressure allowed for some very slight easing of the brake at the most critical moments. I also like the heavy pressure of the load cell. For those still on potentiometers, it's hard to describe how much better the braking feels and results are with a load cell over a pot. And that has to be stressed at this point. I felt that the overall throw of the pedal was a little long for me, but about right for the total pressure the brake actually delivers. If it was more rigid, I would expect less travel, and if it was more floppy, I would expect this much or even more. In the end, I did feel that the difference between the two stages were a bit too far apart, and overall, I would prefer an even stiffer or shorter travel pedal. For the money, it's a pretty good brake pedal, but a tuning kit would go a long way in getting the most performance out of this overall pedal set. Now I did want to also do some heel and toe driving, which meant I had to install the clutch, which was very simple. I just had to re-space the pedals, plug it into the controller board, but now we can really focus in on the clutch, and I gotta be honest with you, I don't have a lot to say about the clutch pedal. It basically is the exact pedal as the gas without the long pedal face. This means the same spring and the same linear motion. There's no fall off point or secondary resistance or any change in the feel whatsoever. It does get the job done in terms of telling the game that the clutch is in, making shifting possible, but it doesn't give you any feeling resembling a clutch. I also found with the clutch pedal added, it did make the pedals feel a little close together. I almost found the clutch pedal to be an afterthought. It is the minimalist version of what you need and no more. With that said, it did its job and enabled me to actually drive a stick shift properly. While doing my heel toe testing, I found the pedals once again got it done. The gas pedal shape is not ideal for heel toe driving as there is no real shape helping your foot clear the pedal to reach the brake. I was able to find a spot that allowed for it, but when comparing it to other pedal faces that are intended for heel toe, you can see the visual difference. The dual stage brake worked well for heel toe driving and that light spring helped me get some brake pedal action prior to blipping the throttle. In the end, for those drivers coming away from potentiometer type pedals like standard Logitech Thrustmaster or even older Fanatics, we'll immediately see an improvement. But for those who've been lucky enough to have their feet on high end pedals, they will immediately recognize that these are inexpensive, even in feel. However, the Moza Racing SRP pedals really are the first step in upgrading into a load cell from potentiometer. At the two pedal configuration, they are the least expensive load cell pedals that you can buy at $179, and that is a huge upgrade over potentiometers. So I did try these on carpet as well, just wanted to give it a shot. I mean, with the 75 kilogram 
load cell i wish you luck i knew better but i did try and what i found is that the pedals moved all the time that amount of pressure under my feet was enough to move the pedals on carpet i didn't even try on wood i just know it wouldn't work and i did even put them up against the wall to see what would happen and i found with the amount of pressure it took to activate the load cell that it actually lifted the heel plate off the ground as well so i i really do recommend at this point when you're upgrading from again that logitech thrustmaster older fanatic potentiometer based pedal systems that you've really upgraded to the point where you at least need to adhere these to the ground i'm not saying you need to have a rig but you better get out the duct tape you better get out a a, a heavy set of weights or something to hold them down you are going to need to set these on the ground if you want to get the most action out of that so pretty decent in that respect and it's going to give you that first step again in load cell and that that next level braking again coming from a potentiometer just you know using the gas as a brake is not the way to go using a load cell even on the lowest level is a huge upgrade i've said it a bunch of times but i just want to make that very clear so i think i've told you everything that you need to know about the moza racing srp pedal set but as i like to do let's go ahead and make it perfectly clear with the good the not so good and the bottom line starting off with the good that being they are very inexpensive pedals for a load cell pedal set all metal construction magnetic sensors long lasting much better braking compared to spring or bumper alone dual stage brake pedal long throw gas pedal adjustable distance between pedals add clutch later if you even need it very small low profile USB standalone. And now on to the not so good. And the first one is really more of a warning, I think, than not so good, but they are a very relaxed or reclined angle. So when you notice I switched to the heel toe driving, I actually did set these at a bigger angle, and I think I was a little more comfortable with that. But they are reclined or very, very set back. Not very fancy for standalone pedals. Thin metal, slight flex under heavy load. Fixed brake tension, no pressure adjustment. Rubber sides are odd and had to be cut away. And now onto the bottom line. You might have noticed that was probably one of the shorter good and not so good lists that we've ever seen. And I think that's because usually when I'm putting that list together, it's where I'm looking for things that are very unique exceptional things that you really need to know about a pedal set and i think of the case of the moza racing srp pedals there are a lot of things about them that aren't that great and a lot of things about them that aren't that bad if you hard mount them they're a lot more sturdy than they seem and at the same time if you don't hard mount them they are a pretty heavy duty pedal set now for those who are already on load cell pedals maybe you're on the fanatic uh, uh inexpensive pedals maybe you're even on the tlcm threads master pedals i don't think i'd run out and start looking to get a set of these pedals i think for those who are already on a logitech wheel you're on a thrustmaster that doesn't come with the tlcm or you're on an older fanatic setup that is still using potentiometer not a load cell brake i think for those people if their hardware has failed them and they're looking to do an upgrade and maybe their budget doesn't allow them to get into higher end gear that this is going to be a really nice emergency option and still an upgrade for those people uh again if you have anything with a load cell on it i don't think it's worth your money to switch to get into these i think it's really going to be a salvation for those people i think it's also going to be a great pedal set for those who are really looking to get into sim racing at a certain level right out of the gates they've got friends who've got them into this they are all in from the very beginning. They're buying rigs, computers, monitors, wheels, everything that now they can get a set of pedals that at least gets them into the load cell and might actually get them in on budget on the overall purchase power of what they're trying to do, building an entire setup. And this might be a good answer rather than having to go to a very inexpensive pedal set and really not being that happy and at the same time not having to break the bank because pedals can run you anywhere up you know five six seven eight two thousand dollars it gets crazy so it gets you into a performance pedal set at a very good bargain and then that guy would probably likely upgrade later 
Now, when I think of the lower lineup from Moza Racing, so when we're looking at multiple different levels or tiers in their lineup with the R9 wheelbase, quite honestly, I think the R9 wheelbase outclasses these pedal sets. So I'm wondering someday, are we looking at a third tier perhaps from Moza Racing? Because again, if you got an R9 wheelbase, depending on which, which wheel rim you got it, I might actually advise you or steer you in the direction of the nicer Moza pedals instead of these because I think it matches that level of equipment a little bit better than these. So I'm not sure if that's really a, a pro or a not so good, a good or not so good. I'm not even sure about that. But are we looking eventually at, is there another higher, higher end set of pedals from them? Is there another tier in the middle? I don't know, but I do think these aren't necessarily the same level as the R9 wheelbase with it being such a great wheelbase. So at $179, are they the nicest pedals in the world? No, I think at first look, they kind of look cool. When you get up closer to the thin metal, kind of takes you down a notch from there. So are they the nicest? No, they are not. At $179, are they functional? Yeah, in the two pedal set, I think at $179, you're getting a pretty robust pedal set that will last a long time. If you hard mount it, I think you're gonna get great results at $179. For me, I think I would just skip the clutch. I mean, I think that this is not the pedal set that is saying I'm a heel toe driver. I want the most action out of my clutch. I think that person, you might want to go another route. But the nice thing is you can buy the two pedal set and just add that later if you need it or use a button on your steering wheel. I don't know, whatever works better for you. But again, $179 for the pedal set, two pedal set, pretty good deal. $40 for the add-on or 220 combined or 219 I should say combined. One thing I didn't mention somehow throughout this whole process was the Moza Racing software where you actually can set and reset and recalibrate the pedal throws just like you can with the higher end pedals as well. So if you want to set the distance a little bit short just to create a little bit of dead zone, you can do that on the end throw or on the dead zone on the resting position for all three pedals, which is a nice feature as well and, and something that I think is, is a good benefit for those. So at this point, I think I have told you everything that you need to know about the SRP pedal set by Moza Racing. I want to thank Moza for sending these over so I can try them out, test them, let you know what they're all about. I hope you enjoyed all of that. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can find out when our next video or next review comes out. You can get advance notice when that does happen. Be sure to thumbs up if you like what we did here. So thank you for watching. This is The Sip Hit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.